Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I'm PJ. I uh, co-founded Vimo uh, together with two friends back in 2008 when, uh, when Magento just came out. And uh, back then I was the uh, web guy. I was the uh, designer head, which meant that I pretty much was responsible for everything customer facing front end. And uh, things like, you know, hacking Magento default theme, trying to understand prototype JavaScript and populating language packs and trying to decipher the uh, tax class settings in admin panel to, to get the tax calculations to comply with, with Nordic and Swedish and, and, and European uh, rules. So, so uh, I think I've done a bit of internationalization. Uh, I'm part technologist, I'm part creative head, and uh, today I serve as uh, chief creative officer uh, of Vimo. Uh, we are a full service e-commerce uh, partner working exclusively with Magento. Uh, we're Gold partner, a decorated gold partner. Uh, the omnichannel flag was the last one, or we're carrying this year. Uh, we're part of that, and uh, we were founded in Sweden. I'm based in Stockholm. Uh, today we're a group of 270 people uh, spread out over 10 different uh, countries. Uh, UK uh, is uh, one of our largest and fastest growing markets. So happy to be here. So uh, to the topic, I put a question mark here. Like, as, as, as if it was a question, really. But, and, it, and it can be. It definitely is a question. It's not, a, it's not automatic. But, but I'm here to uh, fly through a couple of slides here in the coming 25 minutes, talking about you know, what have we seen, what have we learned, what, what kind of takeaways, and then what kind of challenges have we gone through with our clients going global. Uh, because as exciting and, and uh, promising in my look, uh, there's a couple of uh, tricky bits. Uh, and yeah, I like this slide. This is on the topic of exciting and, and promising and potential. Uh, this is a couple of years old, but this is internet population and, and penetration, and, and uh, shows you pretty much w w how the world looked like in terms of internet users a couple of years ago. And I'm guessing it has moved around a, uh, a little bit. But it's pretty easy to imagine a product manager or a sales manager looking at this and saying, hey, OK, I'm here in Great Britain. I'm in, in, I'm in the UK, and then the digital distance to a couple of other red blobs like Germany, Benelux, France, the Nordics, is like zero. The digital distance is zero. So, so, hey, they're all online. We're super neighbors, so let's just go, right? And, and uh, it sounds pretty easy. And, and uh, you know, internet has no borders. Anything is just a couple of swipes, taps, or clicks away. And, and you know, Google will handle the translations, and everybody's got PayPal, right? Um, some parts are that easy, and some parts are, are hard. And um, let's start with the. Basics, getting those rights. So this is the first choice we'll have to make. Conquering the world. Do we, do we want to conquer the world with Magento, or do we want to fail doing so with, with something else? Uh, and I, I'm guessing in, in this room, it's pretty easy. Uh, but, but seriously, uh, this is a lot of the projects we do these days is replatform projects. We take over an existing e-com merchant or brand to Magento because of Struggle, uh, the problems they've seen with the old platform going global. Uh, you, you know, multi-site, multi-language, multi-currency. These are like killer features for um, speaking to Magento. So it's it's it's. Uh, I just yeah, that's uh, that's an important point. And one lesson learned that we've seen is that yes, Magento is an excellent platform scaling globally, uh, going international. Uh, you know, it's it's the, the technical barriers are super low. It's just a matter of you know adding a new website, adding a new store view, installing a installing a language pack. You know, get a bunch of modules in there and a couple of admin settings, and we're good to go, right? And 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 the technical barrier is really that low. And we've done exactly that with a couple of clients. Uh, but but uh, there's a couple of other things uh, as well. But but. Uh, that's the first one. So the tough part is, is you know, getting, getting going and then in the initial parts of a project. We call, yeah, I put it like, yeah, we need to think things through. Uh, when we start, we call it discover, define. We sit down with the client and talk about, you know, what are we doing here? And who's doing what? You know, who's managing the site? Who's managing the catalog? Who's managing content? What about localizations? Do we translate at all? Do we translate everything, parts of it? You know, Who's driving footfall and, and where do they land? What do, who's doing the ads and you know, who's in charge of you know, sales, promotions? Where do email subscribers end up? Who's owning that list and who's running that communication uh, carousel? So a lot of questions and everything really boils down to the site setup. Uh, this can take weeks or just days to talk through, but it boils down to a setup. And this is really key. The site setup is what can make 
or break your, your scaling strategy going, going abroad. Because uh, it's e really easy to set up one site with Magento. It's, you don't really see the, the, the problems with scaling with just one site. But it, you know, when you get to site number five, site number 15, then you can really start to feel the pain uh, of, of having made the wrong decisions in the, in the initial setup. So uh, we spend a lot of time with that. This is one of our clients, Bjorn Borg. Uh, this is how their country menu looks like. We're running. Uh, 14 sites with them as of, as of today, with my, one, uh, one Magento installation. Uh, we've been live since, since uh, early 2013 with them. And uh, this is, yeah, the number of sites and, and all that. And, and 12 of them are localized. And, and the, the picture below here is an illustration of how we start. You know, it's, it's, you know, we have to start somewhere thinking things through. And we just, OK, look at you know, market served, language, and site address. That's like a good starting point. And uh, you can see here, um, like, okay, so we look at each dot, like, okay, market search Sweden. Okay, it's a Swedish site. This is the address, you know, okay, what about localization? What about payments? What about uh, shipment? You know, what about design? Is it different, different from something else? And, you know, what about email and everything? Uh, so this is just a, a good backbone of, of where everything starts. And down the line, it gets very, very cluttered. But this is like the, the cleanest blueprint uh, when we get going. Uh, one of the things we need to figure out, you know, what do we do with sites and domains? And this is the, the basic three versions we work with. Either, either we have folders, Bjorn Borg, Philippa K, Taos, and Agent Provocateurs doing folders, and we have domains, top-level domains, with Fjall Raven, Jack Daniels, Dyson, Pulan and Peter, for, uh, for example. And we have subdomains, which is Gantt and Germany, that are do, doing that track. And it looks like this, bjornborg.com slash UK, pretty straightforward. And uh, Fjall Raven at and then de.gantt.com for the subdomain. And they all work. They all have a thumbs up, and then they all have, like, small pros and cons. Uh, but what we've seen, the least amount of hassle is with top-level domains. Makes life easier with tracking, with, with SSL certificates, uh, with you know, acquisition, ads. Everything is a little bit easier with, with, with domains, but they all work. As long as we keep a language and a currency combination on a di different URL, we're good. Coming back to this one, we could see Canada, one of these edge cases, you know, this English-speaking population and, and French-speaking population. And we just split them with, with the subfolders. Can underscore EN and can underscore FR. So. Another basic piece, the country switcher, as we call it. This is something you see on many sites that are serving multiple markets. Uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Hey, what is your country? And then just you know, click and go, right? Uh, and one of the things that I work with is usability. Uh, we do a lot of usability testing where we sit down with, with users and we ask them to browse or to shop or to you know, do stuff on the site. And we film them and, and you know, we observe when they, when they like, hesitate and when, the, uh, when the, the crease that shows up in between the eyebrows, and that, we, that means we have friction. And this is one of the sticking points. This is not always as straightforward. So we dig deeper and talk with the user, you know, what's the problem here? Why are you cringing? Why are you hesitating? And these are a couple of questions that the user is having, like, what am I really selecting? Is it the language? OK, fine, but then I'm in Switzerland with three languages, or in Canada, like, OK, what's the difference between French or English, uh, or, or content? Like, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Italy site, or I'm from Italy, but there's a US site, and typically the, the translated site is, is a subset of the content and the campaigns and the brand uh, experience. So, so should I sh choose the US to get the full piece? Uh, or you know, currency price, you know, the dollar is kind of cheap for me right now. Does it mean that I can get it for a bit less if I switch to the USD site? Things like this, uh, questions like this uh, are actually in the heads of the users. And, and uh, this is friction. This is a problem. And, and, uh, Another thing that I do is benchmarking. You know, that, that the usability analysis team do is, is we look at sites out there. What, what does reality look like? And this is six real live recent examples of country switchers. Country language, country currency, country currency display currency, country currency in one with the language on top of that, shipping to language, shipping to country. These are live examples. And these are the companies doing that. Country, la uh, country la uh, language is Sarah, Zalando Topshop, for example. Asus is doing country currency. Matches is, is, is doing you know, the, the hardest possible uh, uh, version of it. Uh, Netapote is doing country currency and, and language and, and so forth. So this is actually live right now. This is how the world looks like. And, and uh, there are probably tons of reasons for these, and some of them are technological. But I, I don't think that this is good UX, uh, good user experience. I think this could be, this is for sure causing friction and confusion. Looking at a couple of other sites, the big ones, H&M, Apple, Sony, Nike, and IKEA, it gets a bit cleaner. There's one choice, uh, giving you both country and language. If there's a country with two language, languages, there's separate choices. And Yooks, another behemoth, is, is doing just shipping to. 
And they have Jux is doing eight, I think, localized sites. So it's not a question of language or anything like that. It's just, okay, this is where I want my stuff shipped to, and that's it. That's your choice. So this is how we think uh, it should be done. You know, one option gives you the, the language, pricing, currency, where I shop from, and where I can get it delivered. This is where we like to be. And this is a couple of our clients. With Fjallraven, we're doing just country, fully localized sites, a ton of them. Country language, we do that with Dyson, Björn Boy, and Taos. Shipping too, we do that with Philippa K, you know, a clean English site throughout the different site, uh, regions. And Flight Club which is using the display currency feature of Magento. So this is where we are, and uh, this is where, we're, where we want to be. Just a couple of screenshots. Uh, I think we have Ma uh, Asus, Mattress, and Burberry. This is how we can look out there, and this is how it looks right now, and, and in the desktop world at least. And, and uh, you know, this is another example, Gap. It's an incredibly complex form with layers of choices just to get to the site. And then, you, know, you know when you need to put like, something in bold and red to explain something that you know, there's improvements to be made in terms of usability, right? So this is Gap. This is no, no, not a small player, but this is how, how it looks. Apple is another, is often a good reference when it comes to you know, usability and design. This is how it looks at Fjallraven. Uh, our site, you can notice that I'm on the Swedish site, uh, but I'm doing it from the UK, so I'm getting that question. I'll, I'll get back to that. But this is how the menu looks for, for Fjallraven. Just flags, choices, everything is localized. We're doing a bunch of, a bunch of sites for them, so that's how our country user might look like uh, on, on desktop. This is Taos. We're running eight e-com sites for them, a small shopping bag, uh, showing you where you can actually shop and where you can only browse, right? Another client of ours, Flippa K, Scandinavian fashion or Nordic fashion. They're doing only English sites, but they're doing uh, a ship to choice up there. It says ship to UK. On mobile, of course, it's getting crowded, so we have to hide that choice in the flyout menu. It says ship to UK, and you know, whenever I choose, it's single focus. It's the only thing I'm changing right now. Okay, where should we send your order? Like super to the point, super focused. Switch to uh, Netherlands. On, on iOS, we use the default. Um, uh, Scholars, uh, and then off we go. Now we're now shipping to, to the Netherlands, and nothing else has changed. So very minimal, minimalistic. If you're Philippe K, this is the way they think and act and look and feel. It's, it's like super duper minimalistic and clean. Flight Club, another example. We have a small flag to the top right there with the US flag, and uh, on mobile it doesn't fit, so we put it in the footer because or if you're clicking this. But th these are sh uh, sending sneakers to all over the planet. And if, if you're in Japan or China or a continent that are not accustomed to USD, you want to see you know, how much are these uh, AJ-12s flu game uh, in my local currency. So we have, uh, I think, seven or eight different currencies using just a display currency. In the end, you're still going to pay in the base currency of Magenta, which is USD. But still, it it's, uh, makes sense to have it like this on a, on a satellite flight. So a couple of basic takeaways. You know, keep it simple. Minimize options. Try to stick to one choice, especially on a small screen. There's not room for more, much more. And, and make crawling easy for Googlebot, because Google also needs to figure out these choices. And when Google would get a, a, a form like on Gap, it would be yeah, too, super confused. You know, allow for localization. Make room for, for your future plans and, and uh, you know, to be able to scale. And avoid getting sued. It's super, super uh, dangerous for Germany, for example, just to allow Germany as a shipping country, and, and uh, you might have problems uh, with lawyers knocking on your door because you're not meeting the German legislation for checkout, for example. So there's a couple of things to keep in mind there. Another thing is letting technology do the choice, IP geolocation. Technology, no, I mean, I know where you come from. I know which device you're on. I know the, the locale of your browser. So this could be used, and there's Maximind and, and uh, IP geolocation and different services. So proper service is important. And, and, uh, but nevertheless, this is our playbook. We assume that the user is right. Even if I'm in the UK requesting the Swedish site, we give you the Swedish site and we say, hey, do you want to go to the UK? Because it seems that you're there right now. So, but we let the user choose. And the uh, user is probably most of the time right. And most often, it's going to be a direct type in or, or Google. And Google is very good these days to figure out you know, which site to serve. So, so uh, we just suggest. Uh, this is not our client, obviously, J. Crew. Uh, looks like that. Super standard, like, hello, world. You're from Sweden. This is what, what, these are the rules for you right now, browsing and shopping. Uh, for Fjallraven, we just saw that. It's the thing on the, uh, the bar on the top. Seems you in the UK, you want to switch. So ask once, but let the user decide. A couple of other things uh, going global. Uh, the user interface framework. This is Beyond Boy uh, with our desktop site. Uh, it's a tablet-first kind of approach to, to navigation and, and the design pattern, it's you know, very easy to navigate. We, we, if you're holding a tablet with your, with your hands and then 
driving the site with your thumb, very narrow uh, sidebar or a ribbon even. This is how the British site looks like. No problem here really, everything is like nice. We have my, I have my white space, my margin, and my padding, and everything is working really well. Problem is when we go to like France, for example, and the, the banner is still in English, but you can see that the, the sub, you, can have, you can subscribe for, um, uh, for underwear at Bjorn Boy, and you know, the abonnement or search or client service has a, we can get away with a line break there. So a couple of things like this is something you really need to consider when you're doing like, especially like unorthodox UIs like, like this one. And especially now, I think the worst case scenario would be, uh, yeah, Dutch, like Winkelwagen is 11 characters, two of them are W, the worst possible uh, case for cart. It's very, you know, cart is, you know, four letters in, in, in English and you go to the Netherlands and everything breaks. And we're just about breaking it, but it works. Uh, yeah, Winkelwagen. Uh, this is Dyson, another example of a very compressed and, and very well put together desktop site. Like my white space is there, it's balanced, and I have my margins and everything, and it looks pretty okay. It's, it's really good. It's, it's uh, you know everything is two lined, perfect, centered, very very pretty. Uh, then we go to France. We run Dyson at 14 countries, uh, so we're having 14 sites and one instance with Magento for Dyson. And this is French, the French version. We're getting into a little bit of a problem. You can see the top nav is barely making it. Uh, I'm not sure the SAV has, was, was thought to be an abbreviation, but, but uh, maybe not. But there's not much room to do anything more. And especially if you're dealing with, with uh, a user that has a bad vision, you know, wants to launch stuff, things will start to break. And you can also see further down on the page, like the perfectly aligned, you know, everything in two lines. In France, everything expands a little bit, and, and, and the, 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 the art director is not as happy anymore. But it works, but barely, 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 because we don't have any margins. Another example of Fiat Lab, dealing with filters and attributes. This is uh, French, you know, the material, uh, we have line breaks. But in Finland, we have very few line breaks and very, very, very long words. This is material, you can see how it's, how it's breaking. And these are the choices you have to make, like how, how elastic, how much elasticity do I do I allow for, or do I, do I, can I live with these things? And, and Fiat Lab has you know, made the choice that we, we're not redesigning, we're keeping our font, and this is the way it should be, but, but the kind of, it's a conscious choice. So, a couple of takeaways on, on UI, uh, you know, elasticity, don't squeeze it, leave room for, especially if you're doing Finnish, Dutch, France, uh, French, German even. So that's a couple of the basic parts, and, and uh, the more interesting parts for me, I think, because it's this, that the, the whole value proposition, for, for, especially for brands going, going direct to consumer, like, this is the reality. If I'm going to buy a Konken backpack for my 15-inch laptop, this is the reality. On the phone, I have the Amazon app, like super fast, super sleek. Uh, the backpack at Amazon is 80 cents. No, 80 pounds and 26 cents, right? But on fiat.co.uk, the UK brand side, I'm going to have to pay 85. Like, why? Why, 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 why? And this is something that every brand or every retailer going global will face. This is something that Fiat 11 is looking at and all of our clients are like, okay, we're now open up, opening up in, in Netherlands or Australia. How is the local competition there? How, how is this going to feel like? So this is something that we put up in every new like, launch. Like, okay, how do we match up? What's our real value proposition? And what you can do, you know, a couple of reasons, like a couple of factors that you can try to pick a fight on, like price, good luck picking that fight with Amazon or Zalando, payments, you know, delivery, you know, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can get this tomorrow if I'm uh, on Prime, or, or uh, this is UK, so it's not Prime, but, but still, like, I can get it tomorrow with Amazon. You know, so good luck competing on delivery and return flexibility and all that. And convenience, I've, everybody has an Amazon account or even my card is stored there or my address book is stored there, so it's very, very, very convenient. So on those sides, there's, there's a couple of fights that, that uh, you can't really pick. Uh, what you can do is on the other side, the other factors, you could do work with assortment, availability, value, or perceived value, or added value, the user experience, of course, and the brand experience. Because there are reasons why you would go and pay a bit more. So, just first, these guys, payments, delivery, and returns, you know, local, 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 fast, 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 and free, free, free. You just have to get as close as you can to the local payment methods, local shipping methods, return methods, you know, free shipping. It's very expensive, but if you're looking to make sales, this is where you have to do something at least. And it's, it's still going to be more or less impossible if you're battling against Amazon, but so good luck. But local, fast, free. The other side, 
couple of things. Assortment, what you can do. This is Konken. Uh, this is what PL11 is doing. Amazon might have everything or just a subset of all the Konken models, but there's actually a ton. There's 171 Konken models out there when it comes to price and size options, right? 171. And this is a custom page tailored for Konken only on Fiat 11 or Theory UK. It's, it's a custom filter only for Konken. Uh, this Amazon can't do this, Zalando can't do this. They have a generic UI for, for all their uh, products. So even you know, selecting the classic model, I still have like 43 color options of Konken. And, and, it, and it looks like this. Ton of choices, but it's tailored, very well presented, and it's a, it's a very, it's a nice experience. There's a lot, uh, there's something here that would make me prefer this source rather than Amazon. So that's one thing, assortment and, and presentation. Uh, Beyond Boy, another thing, you know, you, their, their underwear and, and some of their apparel are probably available on many outlet points or retailers, but shoes, for example, uh, one of the things that the brand can do is they can provide the entire line. All the shoes that Beyond Boy is doing right now are available on the site. Uh, another reason, assortment, that you can battle the local competition with. Dyson, again, uh, same thing, assortment, you know, the, the vacuums are even on Amazon and a couple of, you know, you can find them on John Lewis. But, you know, the fans, the, the, when they launch a new, like, hair dryer without the fans, this is where you're going to find it first. This is going to, where you're going to have the most options. Uh, this is where it's going to be presented the best with all the features. You know, John Lewis won't have these lists, uh, or Amazon won't either. So, so, a couple of things you can do as a brand. And Dyson is an excellent brand experience. They're, they're tech heads, right? They're, they're engineers. Uh, so this is how the detail page looks like. And then, then they'll do stuff that nobody can do. They will only... They're the only ones that have seamless 360 spinners and videos of the products. They have like vivid environmental shots of the products that are like tailored to the to the to the gallery like this. They talk like crazy about the products. There's a ton of you know patents and movies, you know, engines this and, and suction that. Uh, you know, specs in the box. They can do a whole different storytelling and, and you know, perceive value about what you're getting. You might get the exact same box at Amazon, but these are doing a better job conveying it, right? Reviews, and again, all the reviews are localized, 14 languages on Dyson. And this as well, use the links, like the PDFs, the manuals. You, you can register your machine and get an extended warranty and tons of other things. So there's a lot of value here that Dyson delivers that the competitor won't or can't. Another example, Philippa K. This is the Philippa K. shop or section on Zalando. So they're trying to, they're trying to you know, build an experience around this. Like, there's a section with subsections. So this is a shopping shop on Zalando with some brand, you know, the text about the brand and you know, the current uh, pictures, but still, still a Zalando feel to the presentation. This is the detail page. It's not this. Philippa K. is even minimalistic as it is. It's, this is, you know, the summer collection, you know, this is the lookbooks, the editorials, the current shots, you know, the, 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 everything's like the, in the perfect Philippa K world right here. Uh, so it's a much better brand experience. If, if this is what you're after, and many of us are after, I mean, it's the perceived value. Uh, we we want to feel like this, we want to have a piece of this universe, which we're not getting at Zalando. So one of the things that uh, brands is doing, Philippa K is doing this. Uh, Philippa K is also doing a lot of other cool things that Salando can't really talk about. This is front runners. Uh, one of the big trends in fashion apparel right now is, you know, this whole thing with sustainability and you know social conscious shopping. You know, they want to make. They talk about you know making garments that last forever. Uh, you know, everything is you know, recyclable. The, the cutting waste is minimized. They do a lot of this storytelling and talking. You know, everything is tracked. Uh, you know, down to the thread. Uh, and you can even lease products. You can pay 20% of the price and get it for, use it for four or five days, I think, and return it. Uh, another way of minimizing waste and then, you know, this evening gown that you use once. Very, uh, very bleeding edge and, and uh, it does something with the, with the perception, right? But then again, we're here. Salando to the left, grid page, you know, similar. Uh, you know, the, the, the detail page shootout, yes, Philippa K is, they have better Photoshop reto uh, re uh, retouch. They have better photography, their zoom is like impeccable, everything is tailored to perfection. So they win this fight. It's a much better presentation of, of the actual product. And they also do this. Who made it? That's the rightmost tab. This actual garment, and this is, they're actually follow, following through on their promise to trace everything. This is made, uh, this is supplied a bonus, bonus training in China, Ganshu, China, and this is the factory, the high fashion silk factory. Even the address, you know, when it started, when Philippa K started to collaborate with this specific factory, the number of workers, 1,350 workers at this factory, 473 men and 877 women. 
They do this on every garment. And you know, in order to, to, to in, in order to trust this, this has to come from the source. Uh, this is nothing that a retailer would do for, for, for their products. Pretty cool. This gene is made in Italy, so they, they really follow through on this thing. A couple of uh, looks at Fjellraven, you know, 12 sites, all localized to the pixel almost. Uh, one non e com site, Germany, uh, we were a globetrotter there doing the uh, transaction for, for, uh, for Fjellraven there. We have a couple, a couple of other sites on other platforms in China, US, and Canada, but we're running the Magento heap. This is how it looks in Sweden. Uh, you know, very tailored. Um, they do a lot of content, of course, content commerce, you know, guides, you know, the curd fit. Uh, they talk about, you know, Orke, the founder, his favorite quote. They're launching a 10 series. Uh, they're launching, they're talking about their hunting collection and the brand stores. And there's uh, their, their social feed are here. So, and this is how it looks in the UK. It's down to the pixel translator. Yes, they do different merchandising, but it's the same stories. It's very, very aligned. Even the quotes and the banners are perfectly translated. You can imagine the effort going into this. You know, even everything is really, really translated. You know, the other sites, they just, you know, this is Denmark, Finland, Germany, Poland, it just goes on. Everything is like, this is the brand page, or the detail page. Translated quotes, you know, portrait, this is the guy, head of innovation, talking about the product. They do videos of each product. They have subtitles. There's a ton of machinery, you can imagine, going into this. But this is brand experience. This is something that they can do, and this is how they're fighting with local competition. A couple of touch, uh, touches on email. Communication, obviously, very, very local. Uh, relevance is super key. And what we see with many clients is that they put so much effort and they're, uh, uh, in, into going global and do, working with the site. So that when, you get to, when you get to the email, you kind of, you're out of, out of fuel and you kind of uh, forget about it. And, and, and uh, it's really important because email should drive between anything between 20, uh, 10 to 30% of your sales. And if you're, if you're not doing it right, if you're ignoring the localization and the, uh, the relevance with your emails, you're losing out big time on this. So, so our main advice, the, what we see in the, the best strategy is just get a partner that can do this for you. We have Fronto.mailer and Clavier that we work with a lot, doing a, an excellent job in, in here. And just simple things, you know, the sign up is, you know, this is Philip K, the global site. You know, when you sign up, you have to specify, you know, which country do you belong to. So you end up in that list, you know, UK, I'm a man, I'm, I'm, I'm now on that list. So they get it uh, from the start. Social, same thing. You know, communication, very, very local. This is Ride Store and other clients that are running. They have a, a Swedish site, a UK site, uh, a European site, I'm sorry, and uh, a Finnish site and a Norwegian site. They have individual Instagram feeds, of course, and in, you know, local people running these things. And some of them are matching and some of the, some of the communication is completely different because it's completely different markets. Uh, Fjellraven, another example of how it might look. They have a brand site on Facebook. Uh, and then they have stores and like, retailers and merchants or fans starting up tons of Fjell 11 pages all around the globe. You can see the Fjell 11 Canada, Fjell 11, I think, uh, Amsterdam, the Fjell 11 store here and there. So it's, this is something that you need to keep in line or keep an eye on or try to control if you, if you want to be aligned uh, and social as well. So last couple of minutes about this omni-channel, which is another key thing uh, in my mind with, with going global. But yeah, we've been living with this trend for a while now and then We've gotten to a point where people are talking about the death of pure play. You need to have stores. Amazon is the best example. The biggest pure play we have, and they're, they're still struggling. They still haven't figured out the last mile. It's very, very costly to deliver uh, the, the, the goods to, uh, yeah, the last mile delivery to the clients, or to your customers if you're reliant on a third party uh, uh, delivery service. Very, very costly. They're fighting so hard for it, but it's, 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 uh, they haven't sold it ready. Or, uh, sold it yet. So thing is here, the store turns out to be an excellent fulfillment center, showroom, and a brand building place, right? So stores is key here, uh, which is what everybody's expecting Amazon to do to acquire something. But key here is that online supports offline. We see that in pre two cities uh, in a new market. If a city has a brand store, we're going to have more online sales there and vice versa. Offline supports online. So this is key. Stores is, is something that can really, really help you. And it's re really easy to forget about the stores when you're going global, because it's usually like a different, different business unit or you know, different parts of the company. The e-com team doing digital and, and the, uh, the classic like, bricks and mortar team doing, doing stores. And this is key. Get them to talk, because this is, uh, I think we're uh, just about to reach the tipping point. And 50% of all sales is touched by digital. So it's not just 
a journey, purchase journey where you're just in the store, just mobile. It's, it's, it's everything. A couple of examples of what we can do. Flip a K, uh, you know, add to bag, save for later. But we have this view store availability. Uh, this is a Swedish site, so I hit that up, and on mobile, uh, uh, I have to, yeah, hit that up, select color, select size, and it immediate, immediately gives me the availability of my stores based on where I am. So you can see here in Lean Shopping, it's, it's low in stock in Malmö, it's in stock. And it's all nice low in stock. But I want a medium, and it's low in stock on all my stores. But I'm, I am in Gothenburg, so I hit that thing. And on desktop, it doesn't make, make so much sense to hit, hit that thing and get a phone number. But mobile is where the users are, right? So, so you hit that phone number, and you're going to dial that store, because that's the most likely thing that's going to happen. I want to you know, call them and say, hey, could you reserve this for me right now? I'm, I'm coming in and picking it up. One example of what you can do. Uh, obvious things, store locator. This is Fjall uh, in Berlin. I want to find a numbers collection. I have to go to Peak. If I'm after the hunting goods, I need to go to uh, Franconia. Basic stuff. But this is things that are easily forgotten. Uh, some, uh, we need to keep this, these two uh, channels aligned. Last example, Bauhaus. It's uh, our Home Depot, uh, the largest do-it-yourself retailer in Sweden. Uh, we're running 17 warehouses and in Denmark, Finland, Norway, there's 23 other uh, digital stores. I've uh, been live with them for, for a long time now on Magento. Ah, it's massive. They have hundreds of thousands of SKUs. Uh, it's barbecue season, so let's try to look at this detail page. So tons of things going on here, but I can add, obviously buy this. But it says home delivery up to the, uh, in, in the, the first uh, green box there. I have six in stock for home delivery. I have 35 in stock in my warehouse in Lenna. And I can jump to another warehouse in Jarefell, I get the opening hours, and I have 14 in stock there. This is things that are happening a lot. Everything is touched by digital, and before I want to go and you know, check this Broil King out, I want to make sure that it is in the warehouse, right? And you can also you know, add it to cart, go to checkout, switch to home delivery, and you see the, the, the shipping costs goes from uh, 3.99 to zero. So classic thing. But you can imagine this. It works pretty well right now. It's, it's kind of a, uh, uh, we just released the latest version of it delivery uh, to warehouses. But you can imagine the effort technically and the requirements and the logistics and everything pulling this through. And you can add that we're in the entire Nordics with four markets. But this is the level of competition right now. This is what, ex this is, what, what is expected uh, in some, some segments. So this is, it's going to be tough and expensive, but getting it right can absolutely be worth it. And this is what we see with Bauhaus. That was the last uh, slide. Uh, Hope that, that gave you a couple of uh, insights of, of what works, what, what doesn't, what we've done, uh, uh, a couple of takeaways. Uh, so uh, I'm around for, uh, for the day and here tomorrow. If you want to reach out, you can also hook up with us on, on the web, LinkedIn, Facebook. We're there. Just hit up Vimo and uh, see you there. <laughs>